time to explain. It's a big day. We got the carbon rear end to test for the first time. Part of the way through the season last year, I figured out that the rear end was a source of a lot of frustration with alignment, uh, getting the right stiffness, and the weight of it too. The unsuspended mass of the bike being lighter, you can get a more desirable suspension feel. All the inertia of it going back and forwards when your shock compresses and rebounds will feel better if it's lighter. So carbon rear end kind of checked a lot of those boxes for me but it's a pretty expensive and long process to get that done. But finally we're here, we've got the rear end and we're gonna go ride it for the first time right now. So I'm stoked. Twenty twenty two is an exciting year for me. I built my dream race program from the ground up and got to develop my custom downhill bike on the best trails in the world. I'm going to some place where I've never been before. I'm going, I'm going where the water tastes like wine. We didn't have the biggest truck in the pits, but we had everything we needed to compete. The season had its highs and its lows. I had some great races and some that didn't go to plan. I'm gonna leave the city, got to get away. I'm gonna leave the city, got to get away. <laughs> I cared a lot, and those were hard to take. I couldn't have done it without the help of some smart people. I'm really lucky to have the friends that I do. Developing the bike was the highlight of the project. Having the opportunity to do this was a dream come true. We progressed through four iterations of my frame designs, and each one was a little better than the last. No use of you running, or screaming and crying, cause you've got a home at. Ripping down the trail on a bike that I designed and built the way we did is the best feeling in the world. And the story doesn't stop here. This season is shaping up to be even better. <laughs> you know, the bike works pretty good, but I think we need carpet fibers. Huh, I know exactly what you mean. Hey, Rick, I think I found something. Okay. <laughs> ah, look at these fibers. Nah, I think That's this too one, blue. too blue, too soft, too scratchy. That one will break. That's too harsh. Wait a minute. Hmm. What about these fibers? I think those will work. Fuck yeah. Doce de la noche. 
noche en La Habana, Cuba. 11 de la noche en San Salvador, El Salvador. 11 de la noche en Managua, Nicaragua. Me gustan los aviones, me gustas tú. Me gusta viajar, me gustas tú. Me gusta la mañana, me gustas tú. Me gusta el viento, me gustas tú. Me gusta soñar, me gustas tú. Me gusta la mar, me gustas tú. ¿Qué voy a hacer? Yo no sepa. ¿Qué voy a hacer? Yo no sepa. This week we're in Portugal. I wanted to come over here to test the new carbon fiber rear triangle that we made. It was a good chance to hook up with Ancho. We're not too far from his house and get the data acquisition on the bike to see if there were any differences running the aluminum rear triangle versus the carbon and get on some good trails that we could ride in the winter time here in Europe. It was also an awesome chance to meet up with Dan Roberts who helped me a lot with the design of this carbon fiber rear triangle. My name is Dan Roberts and I'm a bike engineer by trade. So I first met Nico back in 2015 when he joined Scott as a DH racer. Um, we worked a little bit together on a couple of little projects and since then been avidly following his frameworks endeavors and uh, yeah, got in touch with him and we, we've been chatting about DH bikes ever since. I'm a freelance engineer, so I work for a few different companies. Uh, helping out in any way I can from either start to finish of a bike in development, in testing, in manufacturing or picking and choosing uh, certain sections throughout development that brands might need help with. Uh, Nico came to me for some feedback so he'd been in touch with the factory they'd already done a first proposal of 3D for the carbon rear end and he wanted I guess lots of eyes on it um, in his own words, he says he knows enough to be dangerous. It's a steep learning curve. So I think someone with a bit of experience from doing that from my previous jobs uh, helped out a lot there. So I've been helping out with communication, making sure Nico gets what he wants, um, going through the testing with them, making sure everything's tested okay and interpolating all their results and what's going on. So making sure it all runs smoothly and he, he gets the thing that he wants at the end. I think Nico's going through a lot of different uh, ideas and actually instead of leaving them at a theory level he's testing them properly and he's, he's got his head screwed on so when he tests he's yeah as unbiased as possible and as logical and uh, strategic as possible um, so yeah in theory yeah it's great you reduce weight uh, you reduce unsprung mass you make everything aligned a bit better and repeatably aligned and good manufacturing quality there so in theory it's it's really good and i think it's really cool that he pulled the trigger on it and did it in real life i used to work with dan when i raced for scott and he's got a lot of experience designing bikes and kind of as a favor he just stepped in to help me with this project i sent him the first design of it and he had a lot of input that was super helpful and totally changed the direction of the project so it was awesome that we could invite him out here while we're testing it for the first time and have him see us ride it in person and help us to give any feedback we need to going forward. It was a pretty expensive part to make and there were some substantial gains in the weight reduction of the unsprung mass and the alignment of all the pivots on the rear end, pretty much all the crucial pivots on the bike. But riding it, it really didn't feel drastically different. I think even if it felt equal, it would be a win for the reduction in weight and the perfect alignment of the rear end. I hope I'm not reaching for something, but I do think that there was an improvement in compliance and the suspension was working more freely with the reduced weight, but the difference really wasn't night and day. To be honest, I was kind of hoping for more, but 
I think we're in the business of marginal gains at this point. We came here for a week and we spent the first day just getting settled, walked the track in Lusa, and then rode the Lusa World Cup track for two days. I was pretty familiar with it from Fox tests in the past and racing the World Cup there. It was one of those back-to-backs, so we got five days in a row of World Cup riding on that track. It's changed a little bit. They did a bunch of logging there and they worked on the track too. It's not, it was honestly pretty smooth and I think it was great to get comfortable on the bike the first two days, but it wasn't really hard to get a good setup there. It wasn't, it wasn't very hard to get comfortable on the Lusa World Cup track. Then we took a day off and came up to Ponta de Lima, where we are now. We spent the last two days riding here and this track was much more difficult. It was way longer, probably twice the length of Lusa and just brutal the whole way. Rocks, chunk, it was a hard track to feel good on and pretty physical too. I'm honestly pretty happy we're going home tomorrow. I'm pretty tired from, from riding here, doing full runs with the data for two days. We work with the factory to shoot for the target stiffness that we wanted for the carbon rear end. It felt good, but in no situation did it feel too soft or too flexy. So while we have the chance, we're gonna order one that's even softer, see what that does, see where the limit is of how soft the rear end can be. I think you do lose some precision and can get the bike to kind of wind up if it's too soft on the rear end, but we're gonna try one step softer and see how that goes. Um, and yeah, we're headed home today. Gonna ride for a couple weeks at home and get into some races in South America next month where we can test it in a race scenario. Worldwide Cycler has been a supporter of me and my Frameworks racing program since day one. They made a cool landing page on their website where I wrote a brief summary of all the components I use and why I chose to use them. If you're in need of new bike parts, or just want to find out more about my program, visit Worldwide Cyclery through the show notes in this video or my Instagram profile. Frameworks Racing gets a small kickback of any purchases you make, which really helps to fund my race season. Thanks for watching this video. Really looking forward to the next one.